Hello everyone. This video is for all the people who keep asking me to play King's Quest 4. So let's go ahead and let's play King's Quest 4. So yeah, this was of course... Uh, yeah, so the game asks at the beginning if you want to see the introduction. Let's go ahead and say yes. And you can see there an example of American style dates. Of course, in Europe this would be 1-4 and not 4-1, but that's a small detail. Obviously, it's an American game. So yeah, this game represented a big leap forward in terms of uh, in terms of the, of the technology. This game came out uh, at a time when add-on sound cards for the PC, like the AdLib, for example, were just coming into existence and making audio like this possible. So of course, you are hearing the sounds, the wonderful FM synth synthesis sounds of the AdLib card. Or rather, the AdLib emulation in DOSBox, to be perfectly honest, but it sounds exactly the same. I mean, I couldn't tell the difference, honestly. And yeah, you might have seen the name there, William Goldstein is the uh, the music composer for this game. Sierra advertised fairly heavily that William Goldstein was a real um, a real music composer from the TV or for the TV series Fame back in the 1980s, but. Um, I think he must have been someone of, of relatively dubious fame, because if I check on Wikipedia, um, the Wikipedia article for fame, I don't see Mr. Goldstein's name, I see a few other people who composed the music, so I'm not sure what Mr. Goldstein's involvement with the series was, but Sierra advertised, hey, we got a real, we got a real showbiz person to compose the music for this game, so that was pretty, uh, it was a pretty big deal back in the day. Anyway, yeah, so one thing I, I do like about this game, or one thing that's kind of interesting about this game, is um, the way it just sort of picks up here, um, again, in Medea's Res, so to speak, because this picks up right at the very moment that King's Quest III ended. Which I think, I think this is the only King's Quest game that does that, that literally picks up just at that moment where the previous game ends. But then King's Quest III did sort of end on a cliffhanger. And then King's Quest 4 starts with the, you know, starts with another cliffhanger. It uh, throws you this uh, this curveball. Graham is suddenly um, is suddenly uh, very ill, and everybody's uh, very upset about it, of course, because you know he is the he is the um, father of the family, and people um, people like it when he uh, when he sits on the throne. So yeah, in terms of the technology, this game was a big leap forward. I think the biggest change was the audio, because we went from, you know, a, a single note square wave to this. And the music is quite nice. Um, makes fairly full use of what the AdLib card could do at the time. In terms of the graphics, I think I mentioned when I played King's Quest V, you know, this game wasn't as big of a leap forward in terms of graphics. The graphics are a higher resolution. You probably will notice that there's a, there is a resolution bump between King's Quest III and this, but the color palette is still the same. You still have just a 16 color uh, EGA color palette to draw from, so the, the graphics are still fairly... Um, I don't know. The graphics are still fairly primitive uh, for their time, but but I mean, King's Quest Four. This this game was uh, technically a big deal when it came out. I believe it was the largest computer game ever produced when it came out. It came out on what I think like eight five and a quarter inch floppy disks, or how many three and a half inch disks was it? Was it like five or six or something like that? Um, which was more than any game preceding it. So yeah, this game sort of pioneered that phenomenon of having a ridiculous number of floppy disks in the box, which would continue until CD-ROM-based software started becoming more popular. But the whole floppy disk situation persisted for quite a while. I believe even Windows 95, I think... Like, Windows 95 was something like 50 or 60 megabytes, and I think... I had it on CD, which most people did, if, if, if they had it, but I think there was a version of Windows 95 which came on something like 50 floppy disks, which sounds insane and probably was insane, but that was what you did if you didn't have a CD drive. 
So yeah, so this is the introduction, which I think everybody knows, and of course, Genesta suddenly appears in the mirror and introduces herself to Rosella and um, convinces Rosella to uh, just travel to the land of Tamir. I don't even know how to pronounce that. When I was a kid, I always said Tamer for some reason. Maybe by analogy with Taper, the, the animal. And I guess also the verb, because Taper is also a verb, something tapers off. Um, but I think it's actually supposed to be Tamir, that's my guess. And yeah, we have uh, this touching sort of meeting where um, Rosella and and Janesta meet each other. And Janesta explains what she needs, and Rosella reveals herself to be fairly young and naive, as as she as she of course is, but um, but quite willing to, to learn and uh, experience new adventures. Something about the way they drew the eyes in this scene really creeps me out. Like the way they drew Janesta's eyes here, and then um, that was a very realistic. Very realistic looking tear, by the way. Yeah, just, just the way they drew Janista's eyes here, and then in a moment you'll see the same look for Rosella, and it just really looks kind of, okay, not yet, but. Yeah, so Rosella's kind of stuck here. Rosella is sort of uh, kind of caught in in the web unless she uh, unless she can do what Janesta wants, which uh, which is, I guess, uh, yeah, part of the premise of the game. You're stuck here until you. Yeah, there we go. Rosella looks kind of like I don't know. She she just. Just the, the way they, they made her look here, it just looks kind of I don't know, it's it's like some it's like some creepy haunted doll or something. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. I mean I mean I don't mean to be too critical. I mean it's it's a great looking game. I, I love the art in this game, just just these portraits of them aren't aren't quite uh don't quite match up with uh, with how with what I what I personally would have preferred to see in the game, but but that's just a minor nitpick. Anyway, yeah. So and this kind of this conversation kind of goes on for a while. But here, of course, Janesta reveals the twist, the big plot twist of the game. And turns Rosella into a common prostitute, but uh, but Rosella becomes Ros Rosella is not night is not that naive and is streetwise enough to quickly pick up on Janesta's uh, Janesta's game, as it were. And there we go. That is the. Um, that is the premise of the game. And with that, yep, yeah, well, looks like you're on your own, Rosella. So that's it. So yeah, so that's the predicament that we're in. That that was the, the perils of Rosella. And many of you remember in Space Quest 2, there was that cheat command. If you typed cheat into Space Quest 2, you would instantly win the game with um, with five points more than the maximum possible score. Well, this game did something similar, so, um, but this game kind of amped it up to the next level. So, you know, wh what do we really want to do here? Now, Rosella is, uh, as I said, she's, she's kind of young, but she's a very tough and brave woman. But even so, you know, it's, it's difficult to be strong all the time. Sometimes even the strongest people need to take a moment to kind of do something for themselves. So what, what could we do in this moment that would, you know, comfort Rosella and make her feel better? Well, I think the answer is obvious. It's the same command that made Leisure Suit Larry 1 famous. Let's go ahead and just give Rosella a pause for a moment. And here we find 
the true meaning of King's Quest IV. It's the true meaning of Christmas and Easter all rolled into one. So, and Thanksgiving, don't forget that. So, yeah, that was it. That's uh, that's the end. This has been King's Quest IV. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Take care of yourselves, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.